Yeah, so a lot of people, I mean, we've been doing this for like three years, right? Which is pretty crazy, the growth we've had in three years. But this, this public land shooting range, which I won't say the location because then it'll start getting filled up. Some of y'all know where we're at here, but we are west of Spanish Fork. And this is where everything Tactical Cowboy started. So when I was going back and forth overseas, it was pretty cool. When we moved out to Utah, I was looking for a place to shoot, right? Because I was trying to uphold the highest standards possible in that space so I could be the best guy, I could be whatever, the best operator, right? That I could be. And we get to Utah. I don't really know my way around at all. And we lived right over there in those apartments. You know, when you'd get off that exit mm -hmm. next to Love's, those apartments, yeah. kind of by where Tommy lives. We lived right over there. And I'm looking around from my balcony and I see this big mountain, right? This big brown piece. And I go on the BLM, you know, map about, okay, where can you shoot and all that? Cause like, I'm trying to train. So then when I go back down range, I'm even more squared away than I was when I left, which not a lot of guys do. A lot of guys just go home and chill yeah. and you're not, ne you ne never have off time, right? Never have off time in this business or that business or whatever. So looked on the map and this entire mountain was, yes, you can go shoot there. So I just saw it from my apartment over there and just drove this direction, had no idea. And it came up on this road. And then I'm like, oh, you know, he could see the trails. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, there's trails. So I drive up here and they've got the berms all dug in. And I was like, this is it. So started training, doing all that kind of stuff. And then COVID happened. Therefore it was like, oh man, the, uh, the overseas trips are slowing down, right? So then I was like, well, I've been mentoring people and teaching people physical fitness stuff my whole life. Why not do it with the tactical stuff? I'm feeling super proficient and confident. I love helping people, that mentorship style. So literally started meeting people out here on the mountain. So I made these little flyers, right? Would meet people out here, give them my flyers. This is my background, this is what I do. Going door to door in town like a door-to-door -door salesman, but for tactical stuff. And yes, yeah, started doing stuff like literally dirt cheap. People would shake their head at me if they were like, why would you do that? 25 bucks a pop or something. Yeah, 25 bucks and stuff. Just trying to get to know people and trying to get, you know, our feet underneath us. And then started meeting more people, getting the job at Discount Guns and Ammo, also known as Range Masters. Then started training people there. Right, started training people there. And then we started doing our classes out here. And we did our classes out here for like, what? A year probably. Cause you came out here with us before, right Blake? Yep, that was just after the first retreat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've been doing them out here for a long time. And talk about a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> so when you do your stuff out here, it's like, okay. You gotta show up two hours early, make sure you get your spa, set up all your stuff, make sure there's no Yahoo's doing crazy unsafe stuff. Frickin', and then you gotta get people here. So we put up this big thing, our big sign hanging here so they'd see us up the hill. They'd drive up, and then you got the breakdown. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh man. So at, at six, eight hour class turns into a five in the morning until like seven, eight at night yeah. endeavor. But you gotta do it, you gotta do it. Gotta build, gotta build. Perk oh, yeah. though, it is beautiful up here. Exactly. Nice and scenic. Does go wind does the uh blah, blah. wind does get pretty crazy though. Yeah. Wind I haven't gets been out here, it's been all that crazy, but Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah it'll get wild, just like down at the range. But um, yeah, pretty cool yeah. always to come back and train where we were doing everything at first. Private sessions, group classes, private family events, we did them all out here. It's yeah. a pretty damn good time. Now we got our own range and all that stuff. Yeah. And our own gym. <laughs> yeah. Expanding, man. It's super cool. Exactly. Uh, some people may not know your specific background. Yeah, yeah. Here, let's go up and get ready to knock out some reps and talk about that. So, yeah, I ended up spending five years at 2nd Ranger Battalion out there in Fort Lewis, Washington, kind of like a little bit south of Seattle. Pretty awesome area. Got into that by starting in the fitness world, right? So my recruiter, who I'm still friends with to this day, the guy's an awesome dude, he ended up meeting me at the local YMCA, small town Illinois. We don't have like big gyms and stuff, so the YMCA is all we had. So he, we ended up becoming friends and all that. And then one day he goes to me, 
I had no idea he was an army recruiter. He kept that from me, I think, because he wanted to have a genuine friendship. Really good dude. And then he comes to me, he's like, hey, man, you should be an army ranger. And I didn't know he was involved in the army at all. So I was like, what is that? I didn't even really know what it was. Kind of seen a little bit on Black Hawk Down, right? Sure. But he tells me that, and then he gives me some information, you know, and watched some stuff, some media on it. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Anyways, he set me up for success, ended up being able to go through basic, airborne, and ranger selection within my first year. Did everything straight through, then did a deployment overseas, <laughs> then got to come home and enjoy kind of the fruits of the labor, right? Everybody was like, oh, that's so cool and all that. But yeah, I spent five years at 2nd Ranger Battalion, machine gunner most of the time, machine gun team leader, all that kind of stuff. And then got out in 2015 and then went to University of Colorado, which was fantastic. Got the degree in human physiology and all that. That really helps us as a team integrate the human stress response in regards to self-defense, as well as optimize our learning via neuroscience, right? So there's certain patterns that you can achieve on the range that help your brain pick up the information. And we always try to stick to those so we're not wasting anybody's time. After that, they got to send me over to some pretty awesome places. I think I did 11 or 12 trips with them. I can't remember now. Who knows? Just seems like so many you go back and forth, right? Was that all basically the same place every time? Oh, uh, no, it was all over. all over. It was all over some pretty cool, pretty cool places. But they sent us through a lot of really, really good training, but it really took a lot, of, a lot of it from that. A lot of these pistol skills came from that space. And a lot of these very high standards of marksmanship, much higher than what we did in Ranger Regiment, came from the experiences there. Yeah, but then started doing the TCTS thing, going back and forth overseas for the security gigs, and now it's taken over. Yeah. What's really cool is it's our first year, right? Because I got back in January. First full year. Yeah, this is going to be our first full year with TCTS. And we're killing all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before the recruiter talked to you, had you ever considered doing anything Army yeah, military? Yeah, my, my grandfather was a Korean War veteran. I take that back. He wasn't in the Korean War. I, so I always revert to that just because it's like something simple to say. He went to Korea, but it was like slightly offset from the Korean War time. I can't remember exactly. But he was an Army veteran who went to Korea for a certain period of time and all that kind of stuff. He was an engineer. Gotcha. So we always had the military influence, everybody in my family, aunts and uncles. My grandfather obviously was super pro everything, pro America, pro military, all those kind of things. Yeah. But I was really driven by the fitness stuff. Gotcha. Really got into it, 15, 16 years old. And that really drove me. And it kind of goes hand in hand, right? Pretty much all of the selection processes for all those schools is fitness based, right? Your ruck marching, your running, your PT test. Yeah, you got to do your land navigation, some of your hard skills, but they really still push your physical abilities. Yeah. So it just kind of fit. Yeah. Just kind of fit. That's cool. Yeah. One other reason why I think, you know, a lot of people ask, oh, how'd you transition out of the military so well and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. I think you might have asked that to me before, too. I think a lot of it comes down to an identity crisis, right? A lot of guys have no identity, and then they join the mill, being the military, and they get into it, now they have an identity given to them, almost kind of forced upon them yeah. in many ways. And then they decide to get out, which maybe they shouldn't have gotten out, but whatever, they decide to get out, but now they have this identity crisis where they're like, I am this guy, but they're not the guy because they're not in the thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And they still try to hold on to it instead of kind of moving on, right? Where I think it's been easy for me because I always had the fitness as the base. Even during my time at Ranger Regiment, like. Plenty of times I would probably haphazardly work out too much, not setting myself up for success, like look for like legit missions, just because I was so hyper-focused on fitness, Yeah. where I'd be like, I got to get this workout in. And it's like, oh man, just did a two-hour workout. Now we're going to go on a raid where we got to walk 10 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, you're already smoked. So I probably, sh I mean, I was in really good shape, still am, but... I ain't doing, like if I had to do that now, I'd be like, of course I'm not gonna go to the gym just to stay on my program, right? Cause I gotta do this crazy epic thing later. But that was always my identity was fitness first, just cause that was just me, kind of what I loved. Yeah. And then just got out and just continued it. Versus a lot of guys, there isn't that, like what's their rock, you know? Yeah. It's really cool what we're doing with TCTS with a lot of guys, civilians and vets. It's like that mentorship role being a part of the team is really bringing that to life for them. Like they have a belonging. 
to the Tactical Cowboy family, and they're living this lifestyle of high standards and always continuing to get better. Now we've got the gym, so they can continue that. So it's cool with uh, the fitness and the marksmanship and all that, for everybody that's involved with TCTS, where it's not just about a 292 out of 300 on the roundup, right? Or it's not just about did a great workout this morning and I PR'd my snatch, or I guess you could say recent PRs. I'll probably never get back to those old numbers. Mm. But yeah, sweet snatch, 205 pounds this morning. That was great. It's more about that holistic, always getting better at everything. Like we say, SMBT, small momentum building tasks. Mm. I felt like trash this morning, <laughs> right? But went to the gym, taught the first class, boom, momentum. Started the, started the 645, Jackie taught me and all the TCTS guys. Felt like crap. I got to the warm up. That's the next momentum building. Got to the snatch. Okay. These, uh, it was 10 by one. So you're working up as singles in the snatch. And then I was like, all right, man, the first three, four, eh, not feeling too good. But we got through them. Ended up gaining that momentum. Boom. Had a nice snatch. Sweet. 205 pounds. Super happy. Next momentum building task. Get ready for the circuit. There's freaking burpees, jumping over boxes, rowing, all this kind of crazy stuff. But it was two intervals. So first one, put out that effort. Okay, gain the momentum from that. Second one, put out even more, ended up with a really good result. And then afterwards, I felt accomplished, right? So then, like originally did this morning, I was thinking like, man, fuck that, I don't wanna go train with Blake today. Because yeah. <laughs> we just did the two full weekend days in California, two full travel days. Loved every second of it, but it's exhausting. Yeah. But hit that momentum in the morning, and then afterwards had breakfast and I'm like, all right. I mean, I know I had to push us to 11 instead of nine, but now I had the drive to then come out here. And then yeah, freaking crushed some standards, crushed a PR on the roundup. So yeah, we're all about that. Changing lives to make people more, I guess you could say purpose driven, right? Yeah. It's like every time you do whatever it is, you're trying to do the best you can and going for that next level. Last record was 291. Now we just hit 292, right? Last record on the fives with the standard was, I think I did 2-1 on that video last week. Then we did 1-8, whatever it was. Like that was huge, right? Yeah. Small momentum building tasks to keep getting better. The fitness and the marksmanship start it and then it bleeds into every little part of our lives. For sure. Boom. Heck yeah. Damn, getting deep. Blake's <laughs> penetrating me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just did some fun marksmanship stuff. Why don't we just do some fun speed stuff?